Sometimes I ask myself questions, and I wonder, and I ponder on things, and I want to know, like, why, do, why, why are we so complacent? Why are many people so complacent in believing everything that we've been taught to believe and never questioning it? Like, how, bro? Like, I've always, throughout my life, had a lot of questions. Like, but today's day and age, majority of people don't even question the things that they were taught to believe. And they're complacent in their beliefs, never having questioned them. And it's like they're afraid to question them, as if they're sinning against the Most High, as if they're sinning against God by questioning the things that they were taught. Like, bro, that's... I can't even describe how deep of a deception that is. Like, damn, man. How, how, how can people be convinced that questioning something they have been taught since birth is a sin against the Father, against the Creator? Like, that's completely contrary to what the scripture says. And these people, many of them, proclaim to be Christians. And they proclaim to read the Bible and understand the Bible. But yet everything you believe is contrary to the word of the Most High. That can be found within the pages of the compiled Bible. But see, another aspect of this, and on top of it, like a, a, a deeper layer, why were there things taken out of the original King James 1611? And that's not to mention the previous Bibles before that. There were Bibles that came out in the 1500s, 1400s, earlier, earlier Bibles before the King James 1611. But nevertheless, the King James 1611 had the Apocrypha, had the Book of Enoch, had the Book of Jasher, had the Book of Jubilees. They had all of these extra these added books that they were included these other books were included within the King James 1611 but then they took it out they took out the Apocrypha they took out the book of Enoch they took out the book of Jasher they took out the book of Jubilees and then you never question the council of Nicaea you never, you never questioned the people who compiled this so-called Holy Bible to begin with. You never, you never seek to find out who these people are. What was their purpose for compiling these scrolls? Did the scrolls belong to them or were they stolen from the original people? You never stop to question and ask yourself these things. So you just go along throughout your life being taught what to believe, being told what to believe, been given manipulated information, manipulated books, and told that this is the infallible word of God. And if you question it, then you're questioning God, which is a sin because we don't question God. And then they take you to Job, how the father is dealing with Job, saying, you can't question me, basically. This whole line of questioning, where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? So you never question. You just take at face value all these things that you have been taught to believe. And you're scared. To even stop and think and question 
to go one step further, not to put you down, because maybe it is the fact that you get blinders on your eyes. Maybe you do read the Bible. Maybe you do read it, but are you reading all of it? Or are you just reading the preset, preconditioned, pre-ordained uh, scriptures that they've given you to study? Do you go read the Old Testament? Or do you only stay in the New Testament? Ask yourself these things so that you can understand how to come up out of the deceptions of Satan. There's layers that you got to peel off. And it goes very deep because ever since we've been born on this earth, we've been deceived about everything, including religion. I was just pondering this this morning in my head. And I'm just like, bro, every single religion is of Satan. Like, literally, he's the head of every single religion upon the face of the earth. Okay? Religion is a replacement for what the Father created us as in righteousness, to be righteous before him. He created us righteous. He didn't give us no religion. Okay? Okay? Religion is a counterfeit. So I was talking to a couple of my friends. Um, is a couple getting ready to get married. They're engaged. And um, I met them both. Not to stray off into um, left field or, or whatnot. But um, I'm just setting this up. So they came over for a dinner party the other day. And um, we we got to talking, and my homie, uh, he was like, "But don't you have a religion? Isn't this a religion?" I'm like, "No, no, this is not a religion. This is what is already inside of us. We don't need a religion to know that we were created. We don't need a religion to know that there is an almighty power. Okay." We don't need a religion for that. We don't need a religion to know right from wrong. Vegan butter. So this has nothing to do with religion. Religion is a freaking social construct. Okay? It has nothing to do with the spirit. It has nothing to do with the spirit of truth. Alright? This is, this is a man-made ideology. Religion is man-made ideology. Okay? You're literally taking the words of a man and you're living your life based on the words of a man. Whereas when you leave the ways of this world, which is all of that nonsense, and you give ear to the spirit of truth, well, then you will begin to walk a different way in your life. And your life will begin to exemplify the things that's on your mind. Okay? It's like... You will begin to walk in righteousness. When you walk after the spirit of truth. And when you're led and you're guided by the spirit of truth. It will lead and... It would tell you that my law is within you. You don't have to read it in the pages of a book to know that it is wrong to shed innocent blood. You don't have to read it in the pages of a book to know that it is wrong to literally slaughter an innocent animal. Okay, this is this is basic truth. You you know this. It's inside of you. But religion has caused you to cast off that knowing for the precepts of men. That's how dangerous religion is. So tell me that Satan is not over and is the head of every single religion upon the face of the earth. Because he's taken a few passages, a few, a few lines out of a book and has created a social construct. 
and has created all these laws and all of these man-made ideologies around it. So you, those that follow that religion, live their lives by the precepts of a man. And not that of the Most High Almighty Power, not that of the Spirit of Truth. So I picked up my phone today because it's like I feel it on the inside of me to try to help people deprogram. I come out with a lot of videos, I have a lot of videos on my channel screaming to the rooftop you must unlearn what you have learned your bible okay your bible that you hold so dear it has keys in there it tells you that you must become like a little child in order to enter into the kingdom why does it tell you that because a child does not have a mind full of preconceived ideologies of men. Children are in the stages of learning and they absorb and they're innocent. They're not prideful. They're not arrogant. They're humble. So if you set your heart like that of a child, then the spirit of truth can begin to whisper unto you and you will hear it. and then you will begin to follow the leading of the spirit of truth and stop listening to the words of, the, of, of men upon the earth. Stop listening to the precepts of men upon the earth. And be set free because the Messiah came here to set the captives free. Did he not? He came here to set the captives free, including the animals. And it gives you a story right there in your so-called Holy Bible, how he beat the money changers up out of his father's house, which was the temple where they were selling the dead animal body parts. They were selling the dead body parts of innocent animals. They had others caged up. And it pissed the Messiah off. He had a righteous indignation against these wicked people. The tribe of Judah was very wicked. And they hated the Messiah. They did not like that he was coming to take the animals off their plate. They hated it. And they hated him. And they wanted him dead. And they wanted front row seats to watch him be murdered. So that none of them could say that it didn't happen. This happened. He was the final prophet that had came and they murdered him. And he sent the spirit into the earth. It dwelt into the disciples. It dwelt into those that were taught by the disciples. And the righteous Gentiles, Cornelius. And the righteous Gentiles that were at peace with the, with the Hebrews. With the original people of the way. The people that had the gospel. The true gospel. The eternal word of the Most High. The whole reason why the Messiah had to come to the earth. To reprove us of the precepts of men we were following. It was wicked. The father never desired animal sacrifice. He never asked our wicked forefathers to do such wickedness. They took it upon themselves to do it. And we can find this within the so-called Holy Bible. It's right there in Jeremiah 7.22. I never commanded your fathers the day I brought them up out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings and or sacrifices. Very next verse, but I commanded them this. Obey my voice and keep my commandments and I shall be your God and you shall be my people. But they hearken not, nor incline their ear, but walked in the imaginations of their evil heart. 
Since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt unto this day, they harden their hearts and they hearken not unto the voice of the Most High Almighty. They did worse than their fathers. Isaiah 111, what is the purpose of the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Most High? Bring me no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. Your new moons, your Sabbaths, and all your feast days, they are abominable unto me. I cannot away with. I hate them. I despise your feast days. When you come before me and spread your hands, your hands are full of blood. Wash yourself. Make yourself clean. Over and over and over, he's telling our stiff-necked forefathers that he did not desire no bloodshed of his innocent creation. Over and over and over, he's telling us that he does not want blood spilled on the earth. Especially innocent blood. But you get so-called 2022 and there are billions of establishments set up all over the earth selling the mutilated body parts of innocent animals that's been tortured and murdered for money. And you don't even think about it. You refuse to go watch a slaughterhouse video that's free on YouTube. You've hardened your heart against the very first principle of love. Because if you truly loved, if you truly walked by that eternal law and that eternal principle, then you would love all of the Father's creation. If you love the Most High, if you truly love the Creator, you would not want to be a partaker of the suffering of his innocent creation that's a sentient being that feels all the feelings and emotions that you feel as a sentient being you would care about his creation but you don't and since you don't you don't belong to the kingdom of the most high with that mindset you have to become like a little child. You have to reform your mind. You have to renew your mind. Does it not tell you this in the so-called King James Holy Bible? Christian, does it not say that you must renew your mind? Am I telling lies here? Does it not tell you that you must become like a little child in order to enter into the kingdom? How are you going to do that when you are holding on to all the preconceived ideologies in your mind and you refuse to let the spirit of truth teach and guide you? It's impossible, people. It's impossible. You must become like a little child. You must be humble. So apparently that's what the father wanted me to speak on today. It's heavy in my heart, man. I think about my family a lot. I think about my mom. You know, and I just, all I can do is pray that the father will awaken them. You know, allow them to see the truth. Because they're living in this false reality, man. And it's like, they, they shun me. You know, they shun me. And it's not, I, I, I don't bash on them. I have never bashed on my family. Okay? Never bashed on my family. Everything that I have said to them, I have said to them out of genuine love. 
not ever out of self-righteousness or pretentiousness or any or any of that. It's all been heart, heartfelt, you know. It's all it's all been genuine, and so. My family forbids me, like, my mom literally said, don't mention the B system to me. Like, I, she said she don't, she don't want to hear about it anymore. Because she seems to think that I'm saying everybody, everybody is wicked. Like, she she thinks I'm saying that like the whole everybody in the government is evil and wicked and everybody in the church is evil and wicked. Like she's not even allowing me the time, you know, the the airspace. She's not she's not giving me the ability to break these things down and explain why I said that this world is ran by the B system and that it is an illusion. Like, she's taking it like I'm wrong and like, no, there's the saints of the Most High that's upon the earth and he's going to protect his children. Well, yes, you're right. But are you truly his child? And I never once said that to my mom. I never, I never once said that, you know, but at the same time, I know that she has to understand that. There are two gods in the Bible. You know, you, you cannot serve two masters. You're going to have to pick a side. You're going to have to pick a side. Like my mom, I don't, she, she had to have, she questioned these things before. Because she told me that at one point she, she was thinking about that. And at one point she had a question about, you know, the slaughtering of animals and the eating of animals. And how could that be right? So I know that she questioned these things before in innocence, but some snake came along and I don't know who it was. So don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know who it was. So I'm not trying to talk bad upon the person that convinced her that it is of the most high. That is a righteous thing to slaughter an innocent animal that he gave us dead bodies to eat. All right. So. I don't know who who told her that and who ingrained that into her head, but it's wrong. See, it's in your Bible that the Father said he does not change. In Malachi 3, 6, I am the most high thy power, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. The Father created our food in the beginning. After He created us, He after He created the sentient beings, the animals, and then He created us, He already had our food. Our food that grows from the earth, and He pointed it out and said, This shall be your meat. How be it nowadays, quote unquote, meat is considered the slaughtered dead animal flesh. Of innocent animals. How, how is that considered quote unquote meat now when the Most High Almighty called our meat that which grows from the earth? We were given the same diet as the animals. They were given the same diet as us. We were given the same commandments to be fruitful and multiply. The earth was given to us. So why are we having to pay rent? Why are we having to pay land fees? Why are we having to purchase land? Why do we have to do all of these things? Because it's a satanic system that's been built over this freaking earth and we all live under a false reality. And many people are complacent with that bullshit. But I never have been. I've never been complacent with it. I always knew that there was something wrong with this world. Something terribly wrong with this world. And I never fit in. But the Father called me out. By the Spirit of Truth. 
And I humble myself like a little child and allow the spirit of truth to lead me into the truth of the Most High. So now he has endowed me with several gifts. He's unlocked several, several gifts within me. Things that lay dormant that I had a glimpse of in my early years, in my early life. I had, there was glimpses of, the, of these things. But now that he's awakened me, he's pulling these things out of me and utilizing it for his glory. I always have a heavy heart, man. Because with much wisdom come much grief, much sorrow. Because I, I'm, I grieve for, for my family being in this deception and being so complacent with it. It grieves me to my deepest core that they won't listen to me. That they're so comfortable in the lies that they've been fed all of their life. And then my dad gets, they both, they get mad at me. They literally get angry at me. And say they don't want to, they don't want to speak to me no more. And they want to get off the phone. Not that I'm trying to push my beliefs. And it's not about beliefs. That's my whole thing. My whole thing is like, look, mom, dad, we have to question what we've been taught to believe. Because Satan is the ruler of this world. So if we never question what we believe, how will we ever know what we believe is the truth? That is a logical question that everybody upon the face of the earth should ask themselves. Why are you so complacent? Why? It's because you've had a spell put on you. You've had blinders placed over your eyes. Satan has been given the power in this half of times to bring out all of the things that was, was held back before. Now he's able to utilize the entertainment. He's able to util utilize television. He's able to utilize technology. All of these things come from fallen angels and Satan. Okay, all of this so-called technology comes from Lucifer, comes from Satan. All of the freaking wires and all of this the electrical system, that's this, this electrical grid that's been set up upon the earth is man-made. It is not from the creator. It is a manipulation of the elements, which bringeth about negative energy, which helps to control the minds of the people. And you are unaware of these things. You're unaware that he's able to subliminally program you through the tele -life vision. And then he's literally telling you to your face, tell a vision. You watch it all day and all night. You believe this tell a vision that came from a man. The tell a vision didn't come from the Most High. This is a power of Satan. Through his minions that he's used upon the earth to deceive the masses. You've been hypnotized. They understand how the mind works. They utilize the alpha, beta, delta waves in order to program you, to hypnotize you, to put you to sleep and then program subliminal messages deep in your mind. They pre-program thoughts in your mind before it happens. I'm trying to think of the name that they call this. Um, 
I hate when my mind goes blank like that because it's so much that's in my head at the moment. <laughs> like, imagine it's just like being surrounded by like all of this information and all it like, man, all of these things is like popping up and it's like, no, that's not it. That's not it. It's something, it's, a, it's an actual term of something uh, like pre-programming, like propaganda, like how they put this in a movie or a TV show, you know, some kind of cartoon or something like way before it happens. Um, there is a is a term for that. And they do this a lot. Like they literally put. Oh, man, it's going to drive me crazy. It's literally going to drive me crazy unless I find out what this term is. Predictive programming. Okay. <laughs> I knew it would come to me. All right. Predictive programming. That's what it's called. All right. So they do this a lot. They didn't done it. They did it with 9-11 on all kinds of things that was pre-programmed into your mind before it happened. Okay. They put it in. They put it on your money. They put it on the back of your money, which is, which is your God. Okay. Um, they put on the money in God we trust. But they not telling you what God there is a God over this money. OK, and that God is Satan. And as a matter of fact, oh my gosh, bro, this audio, I don't want it to be so long. But see, I just read in the sealed portion not too long ago um, all about this, all about how Satan has controlled this world with money. OK, with money. And how money is the mark of the beast. Okay? We all have the mark of the beast. In our in our right hand, left hand, whatever the hell it is. But not in our forehead. There are a lot of people though. That have the mark of the beast in their foreheads. You want to know who they are? Those that worship money. Those that would do anything for money. Those that have, have sold out for money. All right. Their God is money. Everything that they think about. Think about it. The mind. What's constantly on your mind. Is it money? The, what you think about. What you think about majority of your time. That, that's what you serve. Okay. So you serving the God of money. If that's what's on your mind majority of the time, that's not what's on my mind. Majority of the time, what's on my mind is the things of the most high. Truth of the most high. What's on my mind is seeing all the wicked things of this world and how it has enslaved humanity and all creation. That's constantly on my mind. Rarely am I ever thinking about money. I can care less about money. I hate this monetary system. It's all of Satan. And it is how he's been able to control the world. And he's been able to cast spells through his puppets, through his technology. And many people has fell victim to it. And then somebody like me comes around, comes along. And you look at me like I'm just an oddball. I'm crazy. I'm a conspiracy theorist. But I'm one of the few that got the eyes to see. And that have been given the spirit to bring these things forward. And many people are not going to like the things that I have to say. Via the spirit of truth. Because people love their delusions. They love their deceptions. They're comfortable in their brainwashing. They don't want to come up out of it. They're afraid to question anything that they've been taught to believe. Oh, man. I do want to read to you guys. <clears throat> I do want to read to you guys this part in the sealed portion because it's absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. But um, 
damn this video is 3535 um or well, this audio I mean um I really don't want to make a freaking video that's going to be freaking over an hour long. Like, gosh, man. I, I, you know, the only reason is because it takes so long to put these videos together. And I'm already like five videos behind. Because um, I have like five audios that need to come out. And now I'm recording this. Um, is 11... 20 a.m. my time on 2.18, okay? 2.18, it's Friday, all right? Um, hold on, let me read this right quick. Uh, I'm on chapter 35 now, mind you people. I've been reading a lot. And I, I need to probably go, I think, to 30, is it 32... Let's see, it's 33. I'm trying to find where I need to go. Uh, uh. These chapters are so long. Some of these chapters are literally over a hundred verses. Okay. Uh -huh. This this describes the mark of the beast in chapter thirty-two. But well, hold on, let me go to chapter thirty-one right quick. Okay, yeah, this is it. I'm gonna start in chapter thirty-one. I think. Let me check chapter thirty right quick. Alright, um, okay, mm. yeah, I just started, 31. 